this um, this figment of my imagination. My, I grew up as a missionary kid, and I thought the entire time that it's just it's just a story, and they're good stories, they're great stories. For crying out loud, a little boy kills a giant, or there's this dude that builds an ark almost by himself, and how is that possible? They're good stories, and I hear about this Jesus who comes and dies for our sins, and it's like. How, how can a loving father give up his, his son to die for me? But after, after I actually started to look at the Bible, I knew that it applied to my life. Every single chapter, every single verse in the Bible applied to my life. So I became a youth pastor, and I became a uh, youth pastor for 10 years, and then God called Rachel and I to, to Evansville to start this church. Because, and again, what I'm about to say for the next couple of minutes is not church fast, it's just the truth. I visit, when we first came here, knowing that God had called us here, we started to visit churches. We had the opportunity for the first two months to visit churches in the area. And we, we would go in and it would be like, wow, the, the music's good, but I just, there's just something missing. They're just... I can't relate to what's going on there. I'm in this season of my life, and to relate to that, I'm not going to waste my time. So, Catalyst Church has one of their core values. Let me see where I can find it. Relevance. Creatively sharing biblical truths that relate to daily living while knowing that biblical truths are always and already relevant. You don't have to come to a church. Realistically, all you and I have to do is open up this book called the Bible. You open it up and you'll be like, wow, <laughs> that was speaking to me. That, that is incredible. Here, here's a quick story about this morning. I did just to, the, I'm going to put Rachel on the spot. All right. Right. And by the way, many of you guys are laughing because I do that almost every week. So my wife, Rachel, I'm going to put her on the spot. Today, she, she was in my office. She came a little bit early. The band was running late. By the way, if there's any musicians in here that want to join our band, make sure you put that on back here, connection card, and we'll have auditions. But all that to say is, in the Rachel came into my office, um, and I was propped up on my recliner reading Bible story. And she looked at me, and she said, God is just funny. I'm like... Lightning bolts, where you at? I mean, what, what are you talking about? And she's like, I came in this morning, sat down, and I'm leading a song. And she'll lead a song at the very end called, what, Leading to the Cross or something like that. So she came in, sat down um, in my office. She's like, you know what, I just need, I don't have any confidence this morning. I just, I'm, but the funny thing is, I, I just sat down. No, God told us truth. No, this is, was not saved or anything. This was a God thing, Right? Rachel does not lie. Trust me, she does not lie. So she opened, she grabbed one of my Bibles. She like, she prayed right beforehand and said, God, I, I just, I'm just having a crappy day. I mean, that's my vernacular, not hers. I'm having a bad day. Um, I need confidence because I don't think I can sing well or play well and all this stuff. So give me confidence, I pray. Just show me something from your word today. God's honest truth, no, no doubt. You open up the Bible. And this, and she was so relevant that she actually has it on her piano right here. It says, she opened up to Psalms 108, verse 1. God told you, she opened it up and it says, My heart is confident, God. I will sing, I will sing and pray, I will, I will sing and praise with my whole being. From what she's leading the song, and the second thing is she was praying for confidence. And all of a sudden, God opened up the Bible for her and said, check it out. Confidence and sing with your whole heart. I don't know about you, but if that didn't put goosebumps down your spine, you, you're like dead or something. <laughs> All right? But here's the deal. The Bible is relevant. And we at Catalyst Church, one of our core values is relevant. We're going to take the already incredibly inspired Word of God... And we are going to be creative with it. We have themes. We have TVs. Trust me, it would be so much easier just to be like, okay, five minutes beforehand, hey, Rachel, what are you going to sing? Caleb, what are you going to sing? Okay, let's do it. And then let's go ahead and David's going to pray. I don't know. Let's come up here and just like, 
All right, Job 40, and just start preaching. All right, trust me, that would be so much easier, and I'd have so much more time in my hands. But we want to be a relevant church. We want to be a church that can take the biblical truths and transform, not transform it, but take it and apply it to your lives in a way that it's just something that you and I can understand. I don't know about you, but if that's not something you're interested in, there are great churches out there that will relate to your life in a different way than ours. So all that to say is, today we're going to be talking about our spiritual journey in our life. But going back to the relevance thing, let me read this passage to you. It's in Isaiah. It should be up on the screen, by the way. Isaiah 55, verse 11. It says, So is my word that goes out from my mouth, God is saying. It will not return to me empty. Or for some of you guys who have been in church for a while, it will not return what? Void. In other words, whenever you open it up, no matter when, no matter if you're on the toilet seat or at church, it will not return empty or void in your life. But will accomplish what I, God says, uh, what I desire and achieve the purpose I have sent out. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, The Word of God is living and active. It is sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the body, soul, and spirit, joint and marrow, and judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Let me ask you this. Whether you're a Christ follower or not, if you have come to raise your hand, if you've ever opened up the Bible and you just read something and you're like, that hurt. And it just, that was for me. Anybody with me? All right, great, great, great. Thank you, Mark. Where's my amen, Mark? Amen. All right, there we go. I need a little bit of Mark here today. All right, here we go. All right, and then I want you all to turn with me. By the way, the yellow Bibles that are in your seat are your Bibles to keep. All right, they're your Bibles to keep if you don't have them. Turn, it's not going to be up on the screen. It's 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. Again, if you do not have a Bible, that yellow Bible is yours to keep our gift to you. It says this. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16. It says, all Scripture. Okay, all Scripture. Who has ever read, like, read through the book of Leviticus before? Okay? The book of Leviticus is one of those, if you want to take a nap while reading it, you will fall asleep after every chapter. But, according to God's Word, it is relevant for our lives. All Scripture is God-breathed. And is, what's the next word? Useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training righteousness. All that to say is no matter if you are far from God, or if you are a pastor or a teacher of God's Word, no matter what time you open this up, it will correct you, it will teach you, and it will help you in your daily living. Sort of like, and I misplaced it, oh, I'll just use this. Sort of like a cookbook. By the way, this is Paula Dean. Anybody like Paula Dean? Woo-hoo! You must like butter and what's the other thing she puts in there? Yeah, fat, just, just trust me. Right? I mean, she's been feeding me quality stuff. All right? Um, in, in here, it, it's, I want to relate it simply like this. God's Word is our cookbook, if you want to say. It has the ingredients to life. And many times we turn to other things in order for our lives to make sense. Kind of like a cookbook. If you go to a cookbook, you're going to be like, okay, what am I supposed to do next? I love cookbooks because it says, for stupid people like me, it's like, take a cup of water. And then it says, take a portion or whatever of, of, of butter. And, and then it says, go ahead and put it on 350 degrees and turn it to 300. And sometimes I say, you stupid, not 400, 350 degrees. And it goes down a list of things that we need to do. And when you pull it out, oh, it's going to taste good. Because you follow the instructions. Same thing applies to God's Word. Today, uh, I, I've never struggled with a message before um, that often. But this week, um, I knew that I, was gonna, I needed to preach on relevance. For, for this series, we're, we're going through, through our, each of our core values. 
And we're going to te teach them why we have these as our core values and how they apply to Scripture or how Scripture applies to it. As eating breakfast with somebody um, on, on, I forgot what day it was. I was eating, eating, there was this last week. I was eating breakfast with somebody, and this, his name will not be um, shared. Um, but I was eating breakfast with this person, and he came to me. And I've had this happen many times. He, he came to me, and he, he's like, Dave, I, I just, I'm not getting fed. I just, I'm coming to Catalyst Church, and you know, the truth of the matter is, it's like, I want more. Like, Dave, are you able to give deeper stuff? Are you able to preach deep? Are you able to do this? And I'm like, sitting back, I'm like, shut up. Like, yeah, yes, but... Then he, then he said, then he simply said, what is the vision for Catalyst Church and the teaching and the preaching within Catalyst Church? And I sat back and I knew it. I'm like, let me explain. So I took a couple salt shakers out and I put my coffee pot here. So I had four different categories. And I said, Catalyst Church teaches specifically to those who are new believers and who are lost. By the way, 80% of you guys that are in here fall under, under that category. And we're going to talk about those categories in a second. 20% of you guys have been in church and you've grown your relationship with Christ. And I would say about 5% of you guys are in the place that you should be teachers by now. All that to say is after I explained it to him, it became relevant the reason why we do these things. And I went back home, and, I, and I'm like, oh, this guy is just, he's not getting fed. Doesn't he understand that as soon as he opens up the Bible, it's, it'll feed you. Just, and then I, I, I kind of asked him, I said, how much are you doing your own quiet time? And he's like, I should be doing more. I'm like, and then just shut up and read your own Bible. Okay, I guess I've gotten this. Okay. All that to say is listen closely to me. I'm going to tell you exactly what I ex explained to him. And the reason why we do it, as well as I really, really, really want you to contemplate your life where you are at. Some of you guys, some of you guys have been Christians for a very long time. And it's time to move up a step. Some of you guys have been growing your relationship with Christ, and now you need to be teachers. I'm going to step on everybody's toes today. I really don't care. Because scripture is relevant and it's about to step on each other of our toes. Are you ready? All right, thank you, Mark. All right, here we go. We have four categories here at Catalyst Church. And, and really, I think and they, there's a new book that was just written called Move. And, it, and, it's, and it's the concept of how our people are really numbers that matter. How many guys have ever been to a really large church, like 3,000 members or whatever? Okay. We've all been to these large churches, and I was a youth pastor at a large church. And all I kept on hearing is, hey, we have 3,000 people, we have 1,000 people, we have this. And deep down inside, I kept on being like, is it about numbers? Is it about numbers? Let me ask you, is it about numbers? It's not, but it is. It's not because it's about one individual, one individual moving through the steps of their lives. Let me say this. You can pack out an amphitheater and say, I'm going to bring David Crowder there. And I'm going to say, hey, we're going to have a great time. And by the way, we're going to have, we're just going to be great. Would it be packed with Christians? Absolutely. You can pack out an arena with Christ followers. Because of the band. But then if you say, you know what? We're just going to sit down and we're going to have a small group Bible study and study the most relevant, life-changing book on the face of the planet. It would sound exactly like that. The cricket would sound. Mark would stop laughing. And Are you with me? It's not about numbers. It's about moving people from being far from God to be fully devoted followers Amen. of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to share with you what it looks like. 
The first step is, is kind of this way. It's, it's the cookbook step. Um, and the cookbook step is step number one. Where is this? There are many of you in this room that still are exploring who this God is. You're like, I, tr I, don't, I don't know if God exists, but I think He does. I I've heard about Jesus, but you know what? I'm not going to give Him the authority of my life over to Him. I, I know about Him, but I'm still, and here's the word, seeking the truth. For those of you who are still seeking or exploring, let me tell you, the answers are in God's Word. It's relevant. It will change your life. I want to park right here by saying this. I am on my knees pleading that you, if you're here, that you do not know my Jesus, that you know Him today. My Jesus, according to God's Word, came to this earth and He died for you and for me. And all we have to do is have faith that we are sinners, that Jesus Christ came and died for our sins. Not a storybook, but legitimately, 2,000 years ago, He came and walked on this earth for you and for me. If you're in this stage, I pray today that you move to this stage. This stage is actually a little bit different because this stage right here is a completely different category in itself. Because if you are still exploring, Catalyst Church is here for you. Because we want to help you find the truth. The answers are in the book. I would say in this room, 20 to 30 percent of you or more are right here. And you've come to Catalyst Church saying, you know what? It seems to be a relevant church. But I'm here to tell you the scriptures are true. All right. And then there are the 50 or 60 percent of you guys who are next. And you guys are in stage two. Stage two is a stage, I should have put an old, old chair up here, uh, an ancient looking chair up there. Some of you guys, let me, let me ask you, how many of you guys have been Christ followers for a really long time? Raise your hand. Okay, all right. All right. Many of you Christ followers who have um, been Christians for a long time have been sitting here very comfortably for a very long time. It's time for you to move forward. Because this stage, the Bible talks about is the milk stage. <laughs> this stage right here is, is a, a great stage. Because the truth of the matter is milk is good for you. Every morning I wake up and my, my son, he just, he hears me and I wake up at 5.30 in the morning he, he comes out and he's like, Daddy, I would like some milk. And I'm like, I'm not complaining because he's not asking for Coke or beer or something like that. I mean, he's, he's asking for milk. I love milk. It is really tasty. And I know when it comes down... <laughs> what I do know about milk of the giving mustache it has plenty of vitamins in here and many of us are still if you want to say nursing in your spiritual life because it's good it's nutritious. And will milk allow you to grow? Absolutely. I want you to listen to these couple of verses in here. Um, it says in 1 Peter 2, 1 through 3, it says, Therefore, get rid, or therefore rid yourself of all kind of malice, 
and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. Like newborn babies, we need to what? Pure spiritual milk? Great. How many of you guys are actually thirsty for milk right now? <laughs> right? That's what we need to be. We need to crave the nutritiousness of God's Word. We need to enjoy it. Um, but then it says, therefore, rid yourself. But I'm a Christ follower. So why, why? I believe in Jesus Christ, but there's just the Bible. I'm just, I don't really care. So, Randy, come here for a second. <laughs> I'm about to give you some of this milk, okay? Do you, do you see anything a little different in this milk? Yeah. What, what are you worried about? <laughs> it's spoiled. It's spoiled. Oh, yes, it's spoiled. And it's expanded and there's clumps. <laughs> Don't we open it? <laughs> Why not? And according to Christ followers, we're, we're supposed to crave spiritual milk. <laughs> but it's still milk. What has happened to this milk when we don't attend to it like we should? I've left this milk out for about four days. I, re I remember sometimes, you know how my son craves milk? There are many juice cups that have just appeared in his room two or three weeks later on. He hides them. I don't know what the, he does, but he hides them. I walk into his room. I find them. I bring them out. And even before I open the top, I'm about to vomit. I open the top and I pour out nothing but cottage sheets. It was like slimy. And all of a sudden, Madison and Ethan and Rachel come running to them. What's that smell? I'm like, do you even sippy cup of milk? Let me ask you, Randy. In our spiritual life, is it possible that this delicious, life-changing, growing milk that God wants us to, to have can turn rotten? What causes rotten milk to turn rotten? By not tending to it. Thank you, Sister. Many of you are. Many of you guys are in this stage right here. You're craving milk, but you're like, you know what? I, I don't want. I don't want to touch it. I, I don't. Honestly, I don't have time to read the Bible. Honestly, I'm just going to put my Bible up on a shelf and come Sunday morning, and and Dave's going to teach from God's Word. And you know what? That's my quota for the day. Great. On Sunday mornings, I guarantee you, we will give you fresh milk. But if you take this fresh milk and put it on the shelf during the week, it's going to become rotten and nasty. But let me tell you this. You open God's Word, and through the power of God, it will turn fresh immediately. Because it's relevant. I don't know about you. Are you here? Are you here? You shouldn't be. Check this verse out. 1 Corinthians 3, 1 through 2, it says, Brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the Spirit, but as people who are worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food. For you are not ready for it. Catalyst Church teaches right here. And you're like, well, I'm in the number three or number four. I'll get to you in a second. 80% of our church is right here. I cannot teach you here unless you've grown and you drank the milk, and you're actually desiring and craving God's Word. Last week, last week, I asked, 
How many of you have not read your Bible and you try to read your Bible this week? And everyone, most everybody stood up and they're like, I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And you walk out and the days went on and you're like, I'm, I'm tired. How many of you guys can honestly say you made a commitment last week that you, you failed the commitment this week? How many of you guys? All right. It's because the devil wants your mindset to be right. All right, so we teach we teach about right here. We want people to come to know Christ and to grow in their relationship with Christ. And now you're like, Dave, but I, I'm, I'm right here. I, I'm in this stage that the Bible calls the meat stage. Let me tell you how good it is. <laughs> he likes milk, so all right. This right here is a market special. It's genuine steak bread, one hundred percent freshness, one hundred percent guaranteed. It is altogether about two pounds of steak. This steak is delicious. Because I bought the same stuff and I grilled it a couple days ago. I put it on the grill, I turn, turn up the heat, I put it on the grill, and all of a sudden it, it, you throw it on the grill and what do you hear? And I'm like, this is gonna be good. I'm already, the saliva is already running down my, my mouth and I'm already smelling the, the fat being burnt off. And, and then Rachel has this very special, I close my eyes because it's, it's gorgeous, awesome thing. And she, the steak was on the grill, and I, Rachel has this special seasoning that, that she, just, she just gave to me, I put it all over it, and, just, and I attended to that steak. Because I did not want to burn it, I like mine about medium, that, that like pink in the middle. I attended to, to it, and I flipped it, and I moved it to different places. I put some more seasoning on it. And again, I moved it to another place, and I'm like, is it ready yet? So I got a knife, and I cut it, and it's, just, it's, it's almost ready. So I flipped it again and again, and I'm like, this is going to be good. So I took out the steak, and I put it on the counter, and, and I, took, I, I, I took a bite. And I took a bite, and I'm telling you, it was so good. And I was so good that I cut off another piece and gave it to Rachel. And was it good? Because I took care of the steak and I desired steak. Because I had moved from being an infant who was still nursing to a solid food eater who I have matured so I can eat Steak. My kids, I still have to cut it up in little tiny pieces for them. It's just so frustrating. Just take the steak and eat it. But I just so they have to cut it up so that they can eat it. But there's little bite-sized pieces at a time. But they're still maturing. Sooner or later, my son will be grilling for me, and I'll still be watching TV, and I'll teach them on how to grill a steak. All that to say, and I want to really get to the point of this. Instead of being all funny and everything, here's the seriousness. Many of you are in this room and you are, you are still exploring. Many of you here are babies in Christ. And I'm going to pause right here again and I'm going to be very honest. Babies, they do three things. And a wise person told me this just a couple weeks ago. Babies do three things. They eat, sleep, and they poop. They eat, sleep, and poop. They definitely cry, too. That's all part of it, absolutely. They, so they eat. They eat what they know is going to be nutritious, and they eat what is good for them. They just know it. So let me encourage you this. And uh, Jeremy, I think it's going to be up on the screen on number two. This is what I want to encourage you to do. If you are babies in Christ, if you have just received Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you're starting to grow in your relationship with Him, this is my encouragement to you. Eat. Eat. If you don't eat the milk, it'll turn rotten. 
We at Catalyst Church have a Bible study called Starting Point. And Starting Point is for those of you guys who are just searching and seeking after the truth and finding out what is my next step and everything. So eat God's Word. Read God's Word. You're like, I don't, I don't know what to read. Well, here's the truth. On the back of this gives you some hints on what to, what to read. Um, but, 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 they eat. I encourage you to eat. They sleep. I just talked to somebody today, and I'm, I said, why, why weren't you at men's Bible study? And he looked at me and said, honestly, I, I, I took your advice, and I want to balance my life and my family. So I'm going to just do starting point. Because right now, he wasn't saying this, but this is what he meant. It's milk. It's what I need right now. So I want to encourage you, is take it slowly. You'll get burnt out with everything happening at the church. You'll get burnt out with so many things going on. You simply focus on your relationship with, with Christ as well. I just find one way to get involved here at the church. All right. And eat, sleep, and what? Poop. Let's just say this. People who are new believers in Christ have a lot of poop to watch out. You agree with me? How, how many of you guys who are, I'm not a rhetorical question, how many of you guys are new followers in Christ, and you're like, I screwed up again. I screwed up again. Type of thing. You with me? You're like, crap, literally. Why did that happen? And you're like, man, I want to encourage you, if you are in step two, to just wipe your booty. <laughs> Seriously, wipe your booty. Listen, this is crucial. Wipe your booty. Stop crying and get potty trained. And the way you get potty trained is go to God's Word and say, hey, what should I do? What should I not do? And follow what it says. Eat, sleep, and clean up your poop. For those guys who are meat eaters, let me encourage you with this. It is time to grow deeper. You need to go from the little filet to the big T-bone steak. You need to eat that solid food and you need to enjoy it. But part of enjoying the solid food is seasoning it. Part of seasoning is crucially important to find out what does the Bible say about this? What does the Bible say about that? And season it. Oh, that's good. That's good. Let's put a little bit more on. Let's turn the steak. Let, let's get a little bit better and better and better. Let's, let's make it into... A tasty meal that when I do eat of it, God's Word, when I do eat of it, it will be so delicious that you can't wait to eat a steak for breakfast. And that steak was so good that you want to stay for lunch and for snack. And if you have leftovers, you're going to cut some up and have a midnight snack because it's so good. God's Word is that good. It will not return void. Step four is the sous chef specifically. I watch Hell's Kitchen a lot. Anybody Hell's Kitchen fan? Oh man, and Chef Ramsay is awesome. He, he is the master chef, isn't he? All right. So let's put this. Who, who has never seen Hell's Kitchen? All right, Hell's Kitchen is basically this this um, reality show of Chef Ramsay. Um, what's this one? Ramsay Gordon. Gordon. Yeah, Gordon Ramsay. He he is he's incredible. He really is. He knows his stuff. Watch this illustration. Chef Ramsay is going to be God. Okay, All right, in this illustration, he's going to be God because he is he knows his stuff. He can smell when something's burned and say, you over there, get a new one. He, he knows his stuff. He knows when you have pooped. He is, knows when you have not eaten. He knows your stuff. God knows your stuff. God knows if your milk is rotting. God knows if you're eating meat. Or God knows if you're still trying to find out things in the book. He's, he knows. So Chef Ramsey needs help. So he has hired sous chefs. 
And I love this. And this is just, I, I found a definition of what sous chef is. And it says this, a sous chef is the head chef's assistant. And he or she does all the dirty work of the chef. Right here, stage four, is are those of you guys who are should be teachers by now. This portion right here is crucial for the development of them. Got it? Chef Ramsey and their sous chefs. The, the Chef Ramsey says, okay, sous chef. What's sous chef his name? Okay, well, whatever the sous chef's name is on Hell's Kitchen. He said, you go and make sure the, those who are really good at what they do and those who just stink at it and those who you need to kick out of the TV show, you help me with them. You're going to do the dirty work. And I'm going to tell you what, some of you, 5% of you are in this room that are sous chefs. Because 5% of you in here really care about teaching other people about Jesus. Most of you are here, or here, or here. I look around this room and I, I see you all. Some I don't know, some I do know. Some of you put on a mask of here. Some of you guys put a mask on it here. Some of you guys, I don't know where you're at, but here's the truth. God wants you to not be apathetic in his relationship with him. There is a next step in your life. Are you going to be a baby Christian for the rest of your life? I really wish that I could just meet with every single one of them. But seriously, just looking at the room and like, and I wish I could meet with him or her and just and, and help them move from here to here. Or if they have a question, move from here to here. I need help. I need some of you guys to step up from here and help me with them. And I need those of you who are Christ followers and have been Christ followers for a very a long time to just suck it up, shut up, and read your Bible. Your milk, your spiritual life is rotten. And like, Dave, you're being... It's, it's about life change. It's about seeing God's Word for what it is and seeing God, God's Word as relevant and seeing God's Word as it's so good and life changing, but some of you guys are rotten. You come to me and said, Dave, I, you know what? I'd rather come to the fun activities like the picnic. I would rather come to the fun activities like bingo. Or I like to come to bunko, I think that's what it is. I, I want to come to those fun activities, but when it comes to studying God's Word, I'm busy today. We give you avenues to move forward, but many of you are stuck here. And as a pastor, it's not about the numbers. It's about taking you from here to here to here to here so that you can go teach other people. But this is not even in the equation right now. Those of you guys who come to like the ladies' Bible study, you're growing, and it's meat stuff. And you're like, well, if it's meat stuff, can someone who's milk go to meat? Absolutely. It might be a little pieces, but you can grow. I mean, I, I, could, I could do stories. I could do illustrations. I could read so many different things of the Bible. But you need to understand that that word, that this. This is life changing. Why are you so busy that your the God's word in your life, your spiritual life, is rotten? Why haven't you moved from a baby into a a Christ follower who is potty trained? Some of you guys still are doing the same crappy stuff that you've been doing your entire Christian life. You're like, I'll get to it. Shut up. No, you won't. Get to it now. Stop making excuses. 
and I'm, I'm saying all this heavily is because, I, honestly, I, I, I get tired very quickly. I drive a school bus. I try to maintain my family. I try to spend family time, and, and I get phone calls all the time. And Rachel, even last night, said, are you married to your phone, or are you married to me? I'm like, oh, no. I need some more people to step up. Because there are a lot of you who are babies that need the help. There are many of you guys who are in this room that are just, you know what? Trying to find my Jesus. And there's some of you in this room that are like, hey, I'm eating the meat. And I'm going to continue to eat the meat, but I'm not going to share this meat with anybody because I like it just the way I like it. So I don't want to share it with anybody. Where are you in this? If you're a, not a Christ follower, Jesus loves you very much. God is up to something in this church. He is. I need help. Today is kind of like a plea for help for those of you guys who are milk to start eating meat. You're like, Dave, how, how do I do that? Again, look on the back of your worship guide and there's avenues where you can, you can get involved. We give Bible studies out. And it's one of the most dis uh, disappointing things, and very frankly to you, is when we prepare the lessons, the meaty lessons, and only a couple people show up because people are just in their home um, drinking the milk. It's discouraging. And most importantly, it discourages God because He has something great in store for you. So, do me a just close your eyes, bow your head for a second. God, this message um, definitely did not go as, as I expected. And God, I don't know why it just it just felt weird, and it just maybe it's my frustration deep down inside, Lord, that that no matter what I say, it, it, things aren't going to change. And God, I cannot share creative stories enough, or I cannot and I cannot do enough stuff to change the minds and the hearts of the people that are in here. But you can. So forgive me for trying to force a, a topic that is so passionate to you and to me. Because God, I don't, and I know you don't want the people here at Catalyst Church and all Christ followers to be apathetic and say, I've got a ticket to heaven that's great.